hello guys welcome to solving solutions here on bound channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems it's nice having you in class again today how have you been so um today we are still here it's still a continuation of our academic videos and then we are going to show you something on i hope you've guessed right because i purposely did not put a title to this particular diagram did you guess it right oh you would have already seen it on the description all right so we are going to show you something on tachymetry you know um where do i start from where do we start from what do we say first what do we say first all right um okay let's start by defining tachymetry you know they say it's a branch of surveying that deals with the um both horizontal and vertical distance um, measurement between two stations using an uh, instrument or what you call it using instrumental observations you determine both horizontal and vertical distances between two stations using instrumental observations like you can have your tachymeter or maybe a tube light and a leveling staff so you can have your tachymeter and the staff or a tube light and a what and a leveling staff where you can do what those are the two or let's say those are the two equipment yeah or the two instruments you can use to um, carry out tachymetry um, observation now the primary purpose of let's say tachymetry observation is for preparation of contoured plan because you know it's a bit rapid you can actually measure the horizontal distance and vertical distance between two points without using your tip you know one of the advantages what we just stated is rapid unlike maybe you want to determine the distance between two points and you start using your tape to you know maybe if it's 10 meter maybe 50 meter 100 meter as the case maybe if there is no adm <laughs> so with this now with your leveling staff and your tube light or the tachymeter you can actually determine the horizontal distance between the two stations and the vertical distance of where the staff is so these are some of the let's say purpose or let's say objective or why let's say why you carry out tachymetry observation however today we are going to look at the constant we have two constants k and c is it a multiplicative constant and an additive constant if i'm not making a mistake so we have two constants k and c now the procedure is that um, you get a fairly horizontal let's say horizontal distance yes like a, a level ground or maybe a ground that is fairly level which is what you can see on the diagram between two points a and b right good so between two points a and b so you can decide to um would i say divide them or split them into equal distances we use 20 meter yeah you can decide to use 25 meter and maybe you can decide to use them um, um, 10 meter or maybe 30 meter depending on how long your total distance is so we have a 100 meter and we have divided it into 20 20 meters so from your instrument station this is where the instrument station is then this is where these are the corresponding staff positions so from instrument station we observe towards to 20 meter to 40 meter to 60 80 and then 100 and at each of these observations what we get or the data we acquire is actually what the upper and the lower staff reading the upper and the what the lower staff reading so this is the procedure on how to determine tachymetric constant so we we calculate the upper and the lower staff reading which will now give us the value of s like an intercept are we together good so this is what you do depending on as i've said earlier as we've said earlier depending on total distance you want to cover and how you have done what how you have split the distances so now let's look at the let's say the data we are working with today the data we are working with we actually use them two distances uh, which is um, d1 and d2 tachymetric constant k and c right good so as we said earlier on the other um would i say diagram you would see that in this case we are having 15 meter and then um, 60 meter right we're having 15 meter and 60 meter that means maybe the total length of this particular observation was what 60 meter and then it was divided to maybe the it was divided in 15 15 but observations were made the staff where uh, the staff position was on 15 meter and 60 meters there was no staff position on maybe 30 meter or 45 meter 
but it was actually divided in 15 or maybe we have a 15 meter mark and we also have a, what a 60 meter mark so at each of the observations you cannot have the same value even if you're using an edm even if you're using a tape any way you want to measure it you know there will always be little discrepancies that's the place of redundant values maybe adjustment completion or the rest of that that's where we also have our mean so let's say we have 15 meters we measured the 15 meter mark five times so at each of the measurements or at each of the observations rather we were having 15.02 for the first one 15.03 up to the last one which is 15.04 so you can see that they are almost 15 but they are not actually 15 they are not equal to 15 so by the time we added all the five observations together instead of having 75 which is actually 15 times 5 if i'm not making a mistake let me check that i believe that's it 15 times 5 good which is 75 we were having 75.14 those little that's the decimals that were added so we need to find the what the average so how do you get the average the sum divided by the total number so we have five there so the average here, as you can see this is the sum which is what 75.14 and then this is the mean or the average as you can call it so 75.14 divided by 5 will give you what 75 point i hope you are with your calculator divided by 5 we have 15.028 right good so that's for the 15 meter mark we now move the staff toward to the 60 meter mark and the same thing happens you don't have 60 meter always so 60.03 60.04 60.05 as the case may be so instead of having 300 as the total distance we're having 300 point what one it so the same thing you are going to do that um 300 point one eight divided by five so we're having what 60.036 are we together so those were the distances we measured at the different staff positions now at each of those staff positions as we said earlier the other data we are going to measure is what the data we are going to measure on the staff are the upper and the lower reading on the staff are the what the upper and the lower reading so when it was at the um, first 15 meter the upper staff reading was 1.585 and lower staff reading was what 1.442 when we moved it to the second 15 meter which is 15.03 this was the corresponding upper lower until we go to the last 15 meter which is what 1.584 and then 1.442 now what does s mean as we said earlier is the staff intercept so it's the difference between the what the upper and the lower so by the time you do your subtraction of let's say 1.585 minus 1.442 are you with your calculator you can see that we add what 1.0.143 um, sorry the calculator is not coming up so we have um, 0.143 so that's the same way you go about getting your s from what from um the first 15 to the what to the last 15. same thing happens to your second distance which we should give you what your second upper and your second lower are we together good so for your second upper and your second lower how do you go about it we are now using the what the 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 staff intercept at what at 60 meter because that's the second distance and then that will give us our second upper and our what our second lower so in the same way you got your s in the first instance the upper minus the lower will give you what your s so that's the same way you get up to what to the last point now the next thing you are going to do is that you are going to add all your s together that means you get the sum of what the s you get the sum of what the s so you simply by adding 0 0.143 0 0.144 0 0.146 you add all of them together you are going to have 0 0.719 are you with your calculator doing the confirmation good so you have 0 0.719 then the next thing you find the average which you know how to do it the sum divided by the total number which is 0.719 divided by what by 5 so we have 0.1438 same thing happens to what your s2 now you still add all of them together 2.969 divided by 5 which will now give you 0 0.5938 this now takes us to the formula we are using a set of two formula for the k we have d2 minus d1 divided by s2 minus s1 and then for the c we have d1 s2 minus d2 s1 divided by what s2 minus s1 so these are the formula you are going to use 
for um, getting or maybe to determine the K and the C. Where our D1, we are not using the independent values again. We are using the average, which is this. Our D1 is 15.028. Our D2 is um, 60.036. And then our S1, which is this other average. And our S2, which is, is what this other average you have here. Are we together? Good. So the next thing now is for us to substitute the values. It's for us to do what? To substitute the value. So since we want to get K first, it will be D2 minus D1, which we've actually seen as what? 60.036 minus what? 15.028 divided by what? S2 minus S1. Now what's our X2? Our S2 is um, 0 0.538 and then our S1 is what? 0 0.1438. So by the time you do your calculation, please confirm these values. By the time you do your calculation, the numerator will give you 48, 45.008, right? Good. Then the denominator will give you what? 0 0.45. So the quotient, that is 45.008 divided by 0 0.45 is about 100.0177, which is approximately 100.02. Was that what you got to? Good. Now you come to C, substitute the values D1, S2, which is this value D1 times S2, minus D2, which is what, 60.36 times S1, 0 0.1438, divided by the same denominator we had here. So by the time you carry out the operation on the numerator, you have this times this will give you what, 8.9236. Are you pressing it on your calculator, please? Good. Then the second one in the bracket will give you what? 8.6332. Okay. You can just stop at this point and go over it again. I hope you're doing it yourself. Because it's very, very important. You just take a break and then you get it. Can we move on? Okay. Good. So we have what? 8.9236 minus 8.6332. So by the time you find the difference here, you have 0.2904 divided by this other difference in the denominator, which is what? 0 0.45. Did you get that value? Because you would have already gotten it. Did you get this value in the numerator? Good. So the quotient here, which is 0 0.2904 divided by 0 0.45 is what? 0.6453 which is approximately 0.65 right so this means that the tachymetric constant k and c for this particular set of data for this particular set of data we are using is what 100.02 and 0.65 um i think um would i say the 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 actual values or how would i put it i don't know the word to call it now but the values for k or the value for k is 100 whereas the value for c is zero so whatever value you have should be closer to 100 and also closer to zero so it should not be too far that will tell you that okay the tachymeter you want to use or maybe the tilde light you want to use for the tachymetry or maybe the set of observation you got is actually what is actually okay so I hope we've been able to explain to you how to carry out, um, uh, we started by how to carry out documentary observation just briefly, but we've been able to explain to you how to determine the what, the tachymetric constant, how to do what, to determine the tachymetric constant. Yeah, there are two methods. Yes, we have the, the field method and um, what's the other method? We have two methods. We have the field method and I'm trying to get the other method. Uh, multiplying constant. Uh, we have the field observation and the multiplying constant. So we've actually shown you how to carry out the tachymetric observation or tachymetric constant rather using the field method. So if you have any problem, maybe academic problem, and you need maybe, maybe assignments, tests, projects, anything, and you need assistance you can always contact us you can see our contact details on the channel description where you can always contact us and we'll get back to you as fast as we can so we've actually provided solution to that particular solving problems thanks for coming to class please um, if you're a first time viewer subscribe to the channel 
like the video share to your friends and also don't forget to support the channel because it's very important for us to keep going so we'll see you again on the next video until then keep being good engineers good surveyors i say gis experts just keep being good at what you're doing and we'll see you on the next video bye